This is Roger Green, host of the Surfing the Next Tsunami podcast. This weekend, we are offering five conversations from Season 3, Episode 52, continuing our preview of AESLD's upcoming The Liver Meeting 2022. Plus, from the vault, a conversation from our Liver Meeting 2021 coverage that takes a look at NITs and the role they might play going forward. This conversation starts with Mazen Nuruddin discussing a presentation Laurent Costera will give at the Liver Meeting titled Perspective Head-to-Head Comparison of Fast, Mast, MIFIB, and F and FIB4 scores for diagnosing fibrosing NASH in patients with type 2 diabetes. That's Abstract 97, which will be part of Parallel Session 33, Monday afternoon at 4.30. Mazen points out that while the paper compares the various tests, the key is to ask which test is best for each specific purpose. That said, in general, these results show that MAST and FAST perform better than the other three tests in terms of area under curve, and that MAST has an indeterminate range or gray zone of around 20%, as compared to 44% with MAST and MIFIB. He suggests this means the researcher will need fewer biopsies to classify patients using MAST and MAST in clinical trial screening, and also that MAST should score better on true classification. At that point, I refer back to our conversation last week about which tests to use at different points in the patient screening process. Mazen describes this as a loaded question, noting that while he has issues with FIB4, it is probably the best primary test at the current time. He repeats Stephen Harrison's question from last week about whether we should start primary screening with fiber scan instead of FIB4. And as the session ends, Jorn Schottenberg praises the paper, suggesting that discussion around proper clinical use will continue, and notes that the goal of this paper, to contribute to the discussion of the value of each test and to ask which is best and how to improve, is the true task of the academic. Our last three episodes of the podcast provide a pretty robust preview of what we are about to hear at the liver meeting starting Friday. Actually, by the time these post, we'll be well into the meeting already. So listen, enjoy, learn, and when you're done, join the dialogue on our LinkedIn discussion group. Let's dive into the meeting. You all know the format from last week. If you're a listener or from past events, if you're a participant, grab one poster presentation abstract that you think will be extremely important or helpful in the meeting and share with us what that's about and why you chose it. Please take about three minutes, four minutes to do that. The rest of us will have questions. Brave one, go first. Mazen, I know you came pre-prepared. You sent me a list already. So if you want to go first, go ahead. Or Louise, were you coming off mute to do that? Either one of you. Louise Campbell. I'll let Mazen go. He's got a pre-prepared list. <laughs> Mazen Nuruddin. Not really prepared list. I had two in mind. You're putting me on the spot now being prepared, and I'm not pre- prepared. This is a peer's pressure, uh, <laughs> Roger. Anyways, let me start with the first one. I'm very sure it's being presented as oral. I don't know how much I want to spill the beans or not, but I want to invite people to come to that presentation. And it's a paper by uh, Laurent Castera from France. And I had the honor to work with Laurent Castera in the last few months as a E for CGH and what a great guy, what a great person to work with and what a great researcher as well. So as you know, Laurent Castera is one of the thought leaders in non-invasive testing and he has done a lot of that in the space of hepatitis C in addition to a lot of work in hepatitis C and he's now in the space of Nash doing what he does at best in ITs and of course many other things. There has been recent literature comparing various scores of non-invasive tests to look at the Nash and F2 and higher including MAST, MAFA and MAST compared to FIB4 and an alpha fibrosis score. And I just want to say my opinion of this. I'm not sure if that comparison is necessary all the time to get that something is, is better than the other one. And it has 0.88 C-stat compared to 0.84 C-stat or area in the curve of both in the area under the curves of that. But anyways, if people want to look at that, Laurent comes from unbiased cohort that he is doing testing on all these tests rather than just having data polarized from certain tests like mine or another test somewhere else in the country. And in that abstract, he compares performance of fast mast and MAFIB, FIB4 and NAFL fibrosis score, which in my mind, again, it's not coming from the creators of these tests and it's all have our biases. So I was glad to see it. In that cohort, actually, I really want people to look into the details and not just the area under the curve. And my colleagues here know that area under the curve is not the end of the 
the world, their sensitivity, specificity, NPV, and PPV, as well as through classifications of each score. And people need to look beyond the just area under the curve, one figure, and, and make their conclusion, especially what they're using the test for. So again, I don't want to ruin the presentation, but basically in a quick snapshot on of the table that he had in the abstract, there was fast mass math at FIB4 and NAFL fibrosis score. Again, to look at NASH and F2, you can train FIB4 and NAFL fibrosis scores to have a cutoff to do that, and we have done that before. And the early under the curve should not look at that only, but I'll start with that. It was very high for fast 0.82, followed by mass 0.79, and they were statistically not significant. Good news, because as you know, that fast is, I think it's an evolving, emerging test and very helpful, especially as pre-screening for clinical trials, and it's the least costly compared to the MRI. MAFEB actually came much lower at 0.69, and they were both better than MAFEB in terms of the area under the curve. So it was good to see that literature coming from someone else, not from us, the creators of the scores. But I also want to highlight the PPVs, and MAS did the best, followed by the FAST score, and the least was actually the MAFEB. To me, I was quite excited about the gray zone that MASH showed, which was 20% compared to FAST and MAFEB, that they were in the 44%. And to me, this is a huge because if you have such a narrow and determinate zone, you're going to do way less biopsies. And someone can look in the true classification, which in my mind, I think it's Aon is, is, is a very good statistician and researcher. And I think it's true positive plus true negative divided by the entire true. And I think they will come up if you do it here, it'll do very well for mass because of the low indeterminate zone and will save cost. It was good to see this data in the context of the recent literature. But at the end of the day, I wrote an editorial or letter to the editor recently for JHAP saying MAFEB, MAST, and FAST useful tools, not a competition. And it's good to have such tools that look at the targeted therapeutic population in NASH clinical trials, which eventually going to translate into clinical practice. So I look forward to that presentation and invite people to attend it. And again, Castera is a brilliant researcher and speaker. So I look forward to his talk. Okay. So before anybody else comments, that is abstract number 97. It's going to be presented in parallel session 33, which is late Monday afternoon. If I read the calendar right, this one goes off at about 545 in the afternoon on Monday. I have some thoughts, but Mazen, last week, Stephen talked about Naeem al paper on the AGA addressing how many false positives arose in F2, F3, and F4 in the resmeterom 2000 person biopsy proven population with FIB4. And what we talked about at that point in time was that, that Njorn talked about this extensively, is that the use of FIB4 is best as a primary screening tool frontline because it does a pretty good job on NPV, but a poor job on PPV. And I mentioned a couple of other posters that are being presented here that took a look at best ways to use that. Where I thought this paper was fantastic is in terms of looking at what do you do next? Because next, what you want is something with a high PPV in a narrow and determinate zone. Because now you're talking about, a, you're, you're in a, probably a hepatology practice and you're talking about a, an enriched population. So I, I had felt that I was going to talk about this paper today, except that you didn't. I've got plenty. The, this paper did a remarkably good job of taking a look at what do you want to do once you get in the clinic. And Jorn, I'd love your feedback on that because these are the points you were talking about last night and I could have this dead wrong, but that was my reaction to it. But let me just make a comment. I don't mean to go, to go first, but uh, this is a very loaded question. And the screening in primary care, I think in my mind is different from what you use eventually in a specialty clinic. So if you, and I think Jorn did a great presentation from the Madrigal data. I think it was an ESA, right, uh, Jorn, on the FIB4. I made it clear before I do have hesitations with the FIB4 in general because of age cutoff and it is performance on type 2 diabetes. However, I have to be very careful with the screening in primary care. I think it's a cheap test that is available and I think it is the best thing at the current time. And I emphasize on the current time because people said we're done, we have FIB4, just don't go beyond that. And by concept or science always moving. So if you have another way with a cheap test that you can screen with better MPVs, PPVs, under area under the curve, yada yada, the overall accuracy, you should always be open-minded for that. Machine learning is evolving on that and I don't want to go to, to that right now. The PPV with the MRIs are better than FibroScan or FAST in this presentation. That does not mean I'm proposing for them to be used for screening the general population. And without doing cost-effective analysis, I know that probably would not be cost-effective analysis. I'm interested to hear others, but the question is, should we use a FAST score as a follow-up for FIB4 or even as a first test? We already published data that 
the fiber scan, like the, our cost effective analysis that the AGA cited as a tool to screen started with in transient elastography. It did not start with a FIB4. That's one question. And the other point is my understanding with the transient elastography that now they have cheaper options that can be adopted, like the fiber go, I think, or something that can be adopted in maybe even primary care clinics. It's a lot to talk about. I could be wrong in certain areas and others, but I think this is ongoing debate. But for sure, I would not use MRIs for screening. For sure, those will be, I think the place for instance for mast, it will be the best probably to save cost in a clinical trials when you're screened because you're going to perform way less biopsy in phase threes compared even to transient elastography. There's 10 to 44% difference in the indeterminate zone, but it and not the MRI's place is not screening in the general population. Jörn Schattenberg. Mazen, this is a great paper. I thank you for raising it. You know, it is the true academic, so it is our goal to define the best test. You know, this paper walks down that lane and compares the different sensitivities, specificities, as you said. In the end, what is going to be used is going to be much different or much less going to be tending on some fine-tuning of the numbers in the populations. It will very heavily depend on what's available in the system. We might be paving the way to inform the regulators which test might outperform one or the other when we get this into clinical practice. It's probably more like, what is a physician used to and what can he offer? It shows that we have tools that are progressing. Some are better than others. Also depends on the context of use, of course. And as such, in clinical care, we might see then, you know, a plethora of tests being used. On the other side, of course, it's an academic debate and it's the true task of academia to define the best test here moving forward. And now back to Roger. We hope you enjoyed this recording. If you have any questions or comments about the content of this conversation or the entire episode, please send an email to questions at surfingnash.com. We will be back Monday and Tuesday afternoons Eastern U.S. time with daily review episodes, Monday for the weekend and Tuesday for Monday at the liver meeting. And we will have a summary of key points from those two episodes on Wednesday evening. Until then, stay safe, surf on. We look forward to seeing you on the podcast. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now.